Let's now take a look at finding the solution to systems of linear equations. And uh, we've already looked in the previous video at how we can use a graph to find the point where two linear equations intersect. And in the previous video, we looked at a two dimensional or two variables, and that gave us a two dimensional sketch. But for um, obvious reasons, it gets more difficult the more variables we have. So if we have three variables, we'll have a three dimensional sketch and four variables will give us four dimensions, which we can um, hardly sketch on paper. So we're going to look an, at an algebraic way of actually finding these solutions. And I'm going to do so with the help of an example. So let's look at the previous question that we had x plus y is equal to 2 and x minus y equal to 0. Okay, So I'm going to look at a algorithmic way of doing it that will be a little bit more clearer when you look at it later on um, when we work with matrices. But for now just try and follow as I explain my steps. So what I'm going to do is to try and get rid of these variables get equations where I only have one variable on the one side and a constant on the other side and I'll do that by using certain allowable operations so one thing that I'm allowed to do is I'm allowed to add or subtract equations from each other so for example you can see that if I were to add these two equations equation 1 plus equation 2 I'll have x plus x is 2x and plus y minus y will give me 0 or I can also subtract the two equations I can say equation 1 minus equation 2 and this time I'll have x minus x will give me 0 sorry I made a mistake here 2 plus 0 is not 0, 2 plus 0 is 2. Okay, anyways, um, second step, x plus x gives me 0, and plus y minus minus y gives me a plus y, so it's plus y plus y will give me plus 2y is equal to 2 minus 0 also gives me 2. Now, that's one uh, operation that I'm allowed to do. The other thing that I'm allowed to do is I'm allowed to multiply an equation with any number. Now I want x on its own. I don't want the 2 in front. So if I multiply equation 1 with a half, I will have a half times 2 gives me 1. So I'll just have x. A half times 0 will remain 0. And a half times 2 will give me 1. Same with equation 2. I want that to get rid of that 2. So if I multiply with a half in equation 2, I'll get 0 because 0 times a half is 0 plus 2 times a half is 1. 1 times y is just y is equal to 2 times a half is 1. And there we have it. We have a solution. x is therefore equal to 1 and y is equal to 1. Let's just test it. 1 plus 1 is 2 and 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 which means that my solution set satisfies both of my equations. Let's look at another example. So let's look at the equations x plus 3y is equal to 7 and 2x minus, oh, let's make it plus 8y is equal to 0. Let me just show you what our aim is. Our aim is to, in the end, have this diagonally downward uh, format. 
and for now that is our aim you might not understand it yet but when we come to matrices we will definitely see why I am trying to get that that format so I want to first of all get rid of one of the variables now you'll notice that here we have only one X and there we have two X's so if I want to get rid of the X I'm gonna to have to subtract this equation not just once but twice from equation 2 so if I have equation 2 I must subtract equation 1 but not just once I'll have to subtract it two times so that I have 2x minus 2x will give me 0 and 8 y's minus 3y but not just once twice that means minus 6y's will give me two y's and now zero minus seven but not just minus seven once minus seven twice will give me zero minus seven minus seven will be negative fourteen okay so let's for now just keep equation two as it is you have to keep one of the equations Okay, otherwise we we've lost one of our equations we still need two equations to continue because we have two variables and next up we are going to try and get rid of the eight um, eight y's you can see that we are going to use the same method to get rid of this y these eight y's I'll have to subtract these y's not just once not just twice but actually four times because each time I'm only subtracting two so I'll keep equation one as it is for now zero plus two y is equal to negative fourteen and for my second equation I'm going to take equation two and I'm going to subtract equation one not just once but four times so 2x minus 4 times 0 will still just be 2x 8y minus 4 times 2y will be 8y so 8y minus 8y gives me plus 0 0 minus 4 times 14 will give me 56 negative 56 okay and finally I see oh I've got this diagonal but it's diagonal upward so I'm just going to swap equation 1 with equation 2 allow to swap equations as well so I have 2x plus 0 is equal to negative 56 and 0 plus 2y is equal to negative 14 and finally I want x and y on their own so I'm going to multiply equation 1 with a half which means I have x plus 0 is equal to negative 28 and equation 2 with a half gives me 0 plus y is equal to negative 7 and there you go this solution set will be when x is negative 28 and y is negative 7 let's test it if x is 28 and y is negative 7 then I get 28 minus this will be 21 will give me 28 minus 21 is 7 2 times 28 is 56 plus 8 times negative 7 is negative 56 which will give me 0 there we go we found the solution to these two equations I'll just say that this is not the shortest method to get the solution when I'm working with two variables it is somewhat simpler 
uh, with other methods, but this is a concrete method to use no ma matter how many variables you have. So if I have 10, I'll still use the same method of trying to get this diagonal, diagonally downwards uh, format in my system of linear equations. Also to get a unique solution, if I have two variables, I need two equations. If I have three variables, I need at least three equations. And uh, this continues so that if I have x variables, I need at least x equations. Well, I hope I could help you make some sense out of all this. In the next video, we'll look at three-dimensional or three-variable problems.